Yes, hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. This is the Clarets Daily News here on Turfcast. And there's been another official announcement and we did say a couple of weeks ago that it was looking like every single goalkeeper would be leaving the football club. Obviously, Arine Mjoric has already left to go to Ipswich Town. James Trafford is about to leave. I would suspect that he'd be leaving. I've seen a few people put out their predicted lineups for next season and quite a few of them are still having Trafford in there. He, I mean, I'll, I'm, I'm just going to say it now. I'd be very surprised if he pulls on a Burnley shirt again. However... I guess if this move to Newcastle, which I still believe he will go to Newcastle despite them signing two keepers already, if this move to Newcastle drags on a little bit, you never know. You could see him playing in the first couple of games of the season. But even then, if I was Scott Parker, I wouldn't bother. I'd, I'd play Haladke or any potential new incomings like Travers, for example. Um, but Lawrence Vigarou obviously didn't make a single appearance for the club has now left. It was an interesting one this yesterday because it came out around three o'clock yesterday. It was reported by BBC Sport Wales journalist. I forgot his name off the top of my head. Uh, Ian Mitchellmore or something like that. I'll just quickly get it up. But yeah, it was reported. Yeah, Ian Mitchellmore. It was reported by Ian Mitchellmore yesterday at around 1pm. And then by 6pm, the club had officially announced that he'd left. And obviously Swansea had officially announced that he joined them. He joins Swansea City on a two-year deal for an undisclosed fee. But I, I suspect it wouldn't be too much. And speaking to the official Swansea City website, Vigaru said, I cannot wait to get started. I know a couple of lads already, Joe Allen and Kyle Norton. And I want to make the most of this opportunity. This feels like it has been a long time coming and I have an opportunity now to train with a really good group of lads and a really good quality squad. I just want to be as good as I can every single day. Like I said, there is a really good squad here and I have... Sorry, and we have to be aiming as high as we can and we have to be looking forward. This is a massive club. I know nothing is guaranteed, but there are some really good goalkeepers I'm going to be working with every single day so yeah Lawrence Vigaru I mean look I, nobody's going to lose any sleep over Vigaru leaving I, I do think it's poor from us that he was never given a chance at Burnley I doubt he would have joined us obviously he joined us only last season I doubt he would have joined us knowing that he was never going to play for us and never going to be given a chance I would suspect he'll look back on his move to Burnley with 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 regret um, that he just didn't go to a club like Swansea straight away but yeah, I do think it's poor from us that, we never, that he was never given a chance. But I do also feel that the two keepers above him, I mean, I'm saying this after having never watched him, but because he came from Leighton Orient, I would presume that the two goalkeepers above him um, were, were you know, better than him, basically. But obviously, I never got the chance to see him play, so I can't say that for sure. Obviously, the management team from last season did think that. Just thinking out loud, I would suspect that he probably joined the club thinking that he would be playing number two, but then not long after, maybe, I can't remember the exact day when we signed him, so this could be totally wrong. But then not long after that, we signed Trafford and then he, he fell down to third uh, with Trafford going in straight at number one, um, which obviously may or may not have been the right decision with Trafford. But yeah, it's it, it, it's done. Vigarou has gone to Swansea, not a rumour, officially announced. Uh, yeah, that's it. We're just waiting for Trafford to leave now and then all three of last, se last season's goalkeepers will have left the football club. Elsewhere, there's been a brilliant interview with Johan berg Gudmundsson in the Burnley Express. And Johan's one of them players who's obviously a senior player at the club. Everyone's delighted to have him back on, on the fan side. Like I said at the time, I think there was one or two negative comments, but... The majority of fans were more than happy to have him back and and he's done a brilliant interview in the Burnley Express. Uh, it was released today, published by Matt Scrafton, obviously being on the, the, the podcast a couple of times, well, just once so far as Matt, but we're hoping to get him back on again, so a friend of the show. And when your hand speaks, he's one of them players where you just think, yeah, I trust this guy. So if he's saying this, then I legitimately believe it. But he's done an interview talking about Scott Parker and he's made a confident claim says the headline in the Burnley Express, about Scott Parker's ability to lead Burnley back to the Premier League. Now, in his quotes, the 33-year-old... Oh, he's actually talking to Clarets Plus. I've just seen it published in the Burnley Express, so apologies to the football club. It's actually an interview on their service. Um, but the Burnley Express have published it, and they say, I've spoken to Scott, and he's just a really, really good man who wants to play football that I think 
our fans are going to like and the players are going to like. We were building something here, but the Premier League was obviously a difficult season. But we've been building a culture here and Scott will carry that on. I think the fans are going to be really excited to see us play at Turf Moor. So, like I said, with Johan saying this, I, yes, it's obviously come from the Football Club's website. So it's obviously going to be part of that public relations about the club sticking it out and hoping the fans get on board but I don't know I just I, when your hand speaks I think you listen because he's a senior player you can tell he loves the club and I don't think he'd say these things if he didn't mean them so yeah a really good interview from Johan one that I I haven't watched it because it's obviously on Clarets Plus I don't think it's on their YouTube just yet or if it is I haven't noticed it but when Johan says things like that to me that I'm thinking yeah okay maybe Scott Parker does know what he's doing and, and like I said on, on, on a couple of videos now every time I watch Scott Parker speak I am starting to think to myself coming more basically coming more round to the appointment of him as manager again I appreciate all these players are media trained and all these interviews are done with the club for a reason but hey maybe I'm just a sucker for falling for these media trained um, charms that these players have but yeah it's nice to see a senior player like Johan berg Gudmundsson say something like that. And it, and it has got me excited for the season to start, I'll be honest. Elsewhere, I believe the club are playing in a behind-closed-doors friendly against Newcastle United. I believe that's today, as in Wednesday. And it's going to be interesting as well because Tonali's playing in it. Obviously, he was banned quite a while ago for his part in the betting scandal. Um, and he is allowed to play in this game, apparently, and this is the first game that he's he's played in since that ban. So that's interesting from a Newcastle perspective, but also going to be interesting for us to see how we cope against such a quality midfielder. Uh, and it's, it's good to see us playing a, a better side again, because with all due respect, um, the wins against Barnsley and the other team who it is off the top of my head, Hearts, good job I've written it down, uh, are all well and good, but obviously we lost to Celtic as well, so it's good to see us playing a better side again, so uh, there is that one. But I just want to quickly talk about tickets as well, because some people do always ask like in the comments when certain tickets are available and stuff like that. The Luton ones are on sale now for people with over 1,750 points, I think it is, from, from today. Uh, and then it goes down again tomorrow uh, if it gets that far. But the home tickets have now been released and the club are doing the same again as what they did last season where they release every single home ticket at the same time. So you can now buy, for example, tickets to the last day of the season against Millwall right now if you go on the club's website and you can do it that way, which not for me I just just do it just do it you know when, when the game in leading up to the game I don't see why they're doing it now in my opinion it just encourages touts um, but one thing I want to say is the obviously some of the tickets this is only in one area of the pitch and only for category A matches context is important in this but some of the tickets that the club are charging are £55 now this has to be in the Bob Lord stand I think it is and in cat cat category Easy for me to say, A matches, so your matches against your Blackburns, your Leeds, you know, teams like that, Portsmouth for some reason, I don't know why the club have put Portsmouth as category A, but the, the 55 quid, which is quite frankly scandalous, it's daylight robbery, 100%, you can sit elsewhere, nobody's going to force you to buy that ticket, and to be honest with you, I've had a season ticket since the age of about five, so I've never really paid too much attention to the prices of tickets. So I believe this is quite commonplace now in the top league in this country, in the Premier League, and for your bigger clubs, potentially even more at places like Arsenal, United, Liverpool. But 55 quid for Burnley, not for me. I, th I think the club have got that one wrong there. It's 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 too much. And yes, it's the Bob Lowe stand, and yes, you can sit elsewhere. I mean, who really wants to sit in the Bob Lowe stand unless you're 75 years old or older? But... It's, it's just, it's it's too much. And, and for a town, a working class town like us, a working class club, I think the club have got that one wrong. And I think it's an oversight and I think they should bring it down. Will they bring it down? No. Anyway, that's it from me. Let me know what you think in the comments below, especially about the ticketing issue, because there's been a few issues recently with the tickets. I know a lot of people were whinging about the premium membership. A lot of people now whinging about the 55 quid ticket prices. That's only for one area. Again, context is important and for certain games. But let me know what you think in the comments below about that. Let me know Let me know what you think in the comments below about Vigaroo leaving as well. Are you bothered? Um, and, of course, give me your predictions for the Newcastle game, whether it's today, whether it's tomorrow. Give me your predictions. Um, but, yeah, we'll be back tomorrow with, hopefully, some reports of a scoreline 
in the Newcastle friendly. But if not, we'll be here the day after with the reports of the scoreline in the Newcastle friendly. But thanks everybody for watching. Thanks everyone for listening. And I'll be back tomorrow.